Great to be with you. Great to be with you. Well, you know, there was an interesting AP story. This, I took this sort of nostalgically. <laughs> okay. When Newt Gingrich last held political office, Seinfeld was the top rated TV show. The Spice Girls ruled the pop charts. And pagers, not iPhones, Facebook, Twitter, online, you know, was the big tech rage. And today you actually announced online, Twitter, Facebook, all these things. A lot has changed. A lot has changed. And uh, I think for the country, the fascinating thing is that there are a lot of principles that haven't changed. And the reason that I came here tonight to announce that I am a candidate for president of the United States is because I think if you apply the right principles to achieve the right results, that we can win the future together. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that having a president who applies the wrong principles and gets the wrong results is going to lead to winning the future. I think that, in fact, will lead us to lose the future. You, um, you made this announcement, and it came in sort of a series of steps, stages, if you will. How did you arrive here? And I guess the first obvious question really is, why, why do you want to be the next president? Well, my dad served 27 years in the infantry and really believed in duty on our country. I think that this country has an enormous potential to break out and to once again be at 4 percent unemployment, to have a surplus of American energy, to be the leading industrial power in the world, to balance the budget as we did for four years when I was speaker, to reform entitlements as we did with welfare when I was speaker. And that's a great future. But it's not a future we're going to get to until we clear away the liberal policies, the liberal bureaucracies, the Washington-centered system. And so you face a choice in your life. And Calista and I had to really sort of sit down and look at citizenship. Uh, you know, are you prepared to do what it takes to offer to your fellow citizens a vision of a better, healthier, safer, more prosperous America? And are you prepared to spend a year and a half of your life seeking that office? Uh, and we reached a crossroads of saying either I really believe the things I've said my whole life or I'd be a fraud. And I, I've, all my life, I've preached citizenship. I've preached the duty to go do things. Back when you and I first met in Huntsville, I was running around the country as a junior congressman recruiting people. Later, when you were a big uh, figure in Atlanta radio, I became speaker with a contract with America based on recruiting people to do something. And so I think my job now is to re recruit 310 million Americans, to make very clear, this is not about one person in the Oval Office. This is about millions of Americans deciding that together we can win the future with the right policies leading to the right outcomes. And that we have to then win the argument that President Obama has the wrong policies and they lead to the wrong outcomes. And it's pretty straightforward. Nine percent unemployment is the wrong outcome. Two trillion dollars in deficit is the wrong outcome. Having the largest federal debt in history is the wrong outcome. Telling the Brazilians they should drill while we don't drill is the wrong outcome. You go down item after item, you know, $4 a gallon gasoline is the wrong outcome. And so I think that we're going to have a very clear, very vivid choice. And my job is to try to offer the American people a genuine sense that with the right solutions and the right approaches, this country can take off again and we could have a 20 or 30 year period of extraordinary opportunity. You